Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, if you're like most patients and you have surgery, whatever it might be, you know what happens afterwards. Where would you really like to be? Well, it's at home. Back at it? home, that's right. I mean, the hospital is really no fun. Uh, the, the bed <laughs> is not as good as the one you have at home. It's noisy, at least part of the time. Somebody's always coming in to bug you, to do something, to take your blood pressure, or give you a medication, or, or take some blood for another test. You know, it is great to be home. But at, at some point, even if you go home relatively early after your surgery, you need to go back, in general, to, to see your physician. They want to know how you're doing. You either have to go to the clinic or the hospital. But you know what? Maybe. Just maybe. <laughs> there may be an alternative. It may be that you don't have to travel all the way back to see your doctor. That's right. A new pilot study at Mayo Clinic is looking to make things easier for patients. Video visits where a patient sees his or her doctor, not in person, but via video from the comfort of their own home, is being studied as a way to reduce the travel and time required for follow-up visits. Here to discuss the pilot study is thoracic surgeon and vice chair of the Department of Surgery at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Stephen Cassavy. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Cassavy. Thanks for having me here. Dr. Cassavy, so nice, nice to see you. You know, this makes so much sense, doesn't it? And who came up with the idea? Well, I came, I came up with the idea after seeing patients uh, in clinic and our patients come from very far away occasionally we have patients from the local area but we also have patients from very far away and as you said surgeons uh, have it ingrained in us that we want to know how our patients are doing make sure that what we've done has been well received and the patients doing well follow-up after surgery is is part of what we do but bringing people back for what is usually if things have gone well in surgery, a very anticlimactic visit is, is a very tough thing when uh, these patients are coming from 700 miles away. Even if they like you, it's inconvenient for them, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we, we'll drive up to the cities to go see a, a, a play or a, or a concert. You know, if you're driving up after a long day of work, you're saying, well, I hope they put on a good show. <laughs> these people are coming from 700 miles away, and you're seeing them for 15 minutes. And there's no show. It's not much of a show. <laughs> and you yeah. say, oh, you're looking good. Yeah. So how many patients have you studied? We, Through the first pilot, we put 111 patients through this. Uh, put it through. They, they were very sure. happy to go through this because uh, they were able to stay at home. And how much travel, how many miles were saved because of the, just your pilot study? So I have to look back and uh, just to make sure it was somewhere around uh, 160,000 miles. <laughs> Yeah, for a hundred huh? patients. Yeah, that's that's almost seven circumferences of the Earth. No, uh, it's no wonder the price of oil is down. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how do you decide? And I assume you make this decision either before you do the surgery or sometimes uh, shortly thereafter. How do you decide who it's okay to do that for? Who doesn't need to come back, and who does? So, it's the majority of patients who qualify for this. It's someone who's uh, been operated on, who things went er, for for whom things went well during the surgery and, and in, the post, in the early post-operative period in the hospital, where you don't expect there to be a problem. If there's another reason for them to come back to the clinic, other appointments that they're going to take uh, that they need for follow-up, then it's probably not uh, of use for them. But if these are people who could get back to their life and avoid the, the travel here for that anticlimactic visit, then they're... they're they're up for this. But even if a patient, you know, like you said, that they've got other tests that need to be done, even if it's just, you know, you need a blood draw and see, I mean, that could easily be done at home. They could go to their local clinic, wherever they are, just get that blood test and then do the video visit with you. Sure, absolutely. In, in the type of surgery I do, thoracic surgery or chest surgery, we often follow up with a chest x-ray. Well, they get that done locally. And uh, nowadays with the internet, uh, that uh, can be transmitted to us uh, either by internet or by... Uh, uh, FedExing the uh, sure. the CD, so we have the images to look at at the time of the video visit. Well, it's also interesting that you're able to do this uh, because of what you do. I mean, what you do, you you don't do Mickey Mouse surgery. This is not hangnail surgery. I mean, this is chest surgery. It's big time. Well, I appreciate that coming from you. You do big <laughs> surgery too. It's funny because our operating rooms are right next to each ah, other. Yeah, yes. we keep an eye on each other. Good. Yeah. Um, no, it, it it can be done with. Uh, virtually any type of surgical procedure where you have follow-up. And surgeons know who, who this would apply to because sure. those visits that we see people for are important to make sure that things are okay, but they're often anticlimactic. 
How secure is this video? I mean, is this just like a Skype thing? Or? So it's very similar to Skype, but we went the extra mile because we have regulations in healthcare about uh, privacy and oh, security. Sure. And uh, we didn't want to do this through FaceTime where all of the data goes through Cupertino, California. <laughs> sure. Um, so, so everybody can see. Right, yeah. right. Or, or, or other people can. So we, we partnered with a, an outside uh, informatics group and came up with a, a secure way of doing this. Uh, to protect as best as possible. I mean, we live in the internet age where our sense of privacy may be a little different than for our kids than it was for us. So but it's, it's safe. The uh, Doing the study and the pilot program, then what's next? Are you going to do another pilot, or is this ready to be instituted? So we're, we're, we're working with uh, the Mayo uh, compliance people, uh, people at Mayo Clinic in terms of uh, the legal uh, issues of, uh, of looking after patients across borders. And uh, what we've come up with is if these are patients who you've already seen, if you, you would otherwise be able to telephone them, then why not video? And so I think that uh, um, although technology was starting to outstrip regulations, uh, the reg regulatory folks are starting to realize the, that this makes common sense. Uh, oh, oh, go ahead. Is part of the reason you're able to do this because uh, a fair number of things that you do are less invasive than they used to? I mean, you used to always have to open the chest to do anything, but now you do a fair amount of stuff through the scope, right? I think a lot of stuff is, is now able to be done minimally invasively. It makes for a less impact physically on the patient. So I think that that is uh, part of it. But this... Uh, this type of follow-up can be done with even major uh, incisional surgery. Uh, some of our esophagectomy patients are included in this. Esophagectomy? Yes. What does that mean? The <laughs> sorry, the removal of, uh, of the swallowing tube. You take the whole thing out? Yeah. Well, then what happens? We bring the stomach up to replace it, usually the stomach. Uh, this is for serious things like uh, esophageal cancer. So even those patients, can you can video them afterwards and they don't necessarily have to come back. Because that's a huge operation. It is. Yeah. And, and it, it underlines the importance of the follow-up because it's not just a, hey, how you doing, you look fine. There are some key questions. And for each operation, there are different key questions and key points that you want to ascertain. So for a, an esophagectomy patient, you want to know how they're swallowing. You want to know how their weight is, how stable their weight is. All of these kind of things are important to follow up. So it, it really underlines the importance of that uh, keeping track of your patient. But now the necessity of bringing them back here is, is in question and can be, can be uh, worked with. Well, you said even a 700-mile drive. I mean, I would contend that even if you're driving, you know, less than an hour, you're still time spent you know time traveling try time parking time you got to take time off of work i mean there's a lot of time that could be saved by doing this no matter how far a patient is traveling absolutely so obviously the the la larger the distance the more impact but uh um yeah we're we're really recognizing that the patient's time is important and and that's why it's impo important for them it's really in the patient's best interest there's a little note here that says there might be some connection between what you're doing and Will and Charlie Mayo. So I, I'm, a, I'm a student of history a bit, and I was looking back, and I found an old article in uh, the precursor to the Rochester local newspaper. It was called the, the Record and Union. It's an article from back in December of 1879, and it describes the telephone, the, the, the first telephone that was set up in Rochester, Minnesota. In fact, constructed by the 14-year-old Charlie Mayo, for his dad, who was the, the doctor. The first telephone in town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Mayos. And, and, uh, and it describes in, in some detail how to access this and how you would, um, and, and how you would use it. And, and uh, what was telling to me was the final lines of the, of the article, and I'll read them out to you. This will prove not only a convenience but a positive benefit to both the doctor and his patients. <laughs> and I thought that rung true of the video visit pilot as well. Incredible. You're doing the same thing, only in a little more sophisticated way. <laughs> Dr. Stephen Cassavy, thoracic surgeon at the Mayo Clinic, thanks so much for being with you. Video visits. Thank you.